Hi everyone, Dr. Nimichek here. Um, you know, we've been talking about the importance of glutamine and uh, how it can help the leaky gut in COVID. I want to touch on that and some data that tells us actually how fast the glutamine can work. So uh, you've seen this graphic before. This line here is the barrier in your small intestine. And so I've got this marked off. So here's normal. This is a bacteria here. And this side shows it's healthy, nothing's getting through here. This little hatch line just shows a normal absorption of uh, short chain fatty acids. So this is normal. Now, what we've talked about before a lot is SIBO, or small intestine bacterial overgrowth. And that's represented over here. We have lots of bacteria floating around in uh, the small intestine, upwards to 10,000 to 100,000 times the normal bacteria. That stress causes a leak between the seams. You see how this is between the seams? This is what everybody calls leaky gut, okay? This happens from excess bacteria. Just as an aside, this doesn't happen from parasites, this doesn't happen from yeast. It's from refax, from excess bacteria, it's SIBO, and that's why we use rifaximin or inulin or partially hydrogenated gargum, that's another prebiotic fiber. What they've discovered in the last 18, 24 months is that glutamine, uh, excuse me, that COVID uh, is associated with what we call apoptotic uh, permeability. And apoptotic means just the cells die. The, the entire cell dies. And so you can have rather intense flow of um, foreign material. Now on this other side here, this space here, I've said before, this is 70% of the immune system is in that band of tissue right around the small intestine. So you definitely get uh, increased uh, inflammation from just this paracellular permeability. But when you have the COVID and apoptotic, uh, some will refer to it as hyperpermeability. And it's uh, being believed now to be a, one of the factors for mortality in hospitalized patients. And it is all now being linked with um, the uh, development and sustained long COVID, which happens in about a third of patients after having symptomatic COVID infections will have symptoms at a year. 15% of people, those symptoms will persist for two years, okay? And this is a big player in that. So we've known about apoptotic permeability. It develops because of the high inflammation by COVID causes this global uh, glutamine deficiency in the body and these cells will deteriorate without the glutamine. So by supplementing with glutamine, these cells will improve, and I wanna give you a sense of how quickly that helps. Uh, one of the factors is these are the fastest replicating cells in the body. They divide about every four days, which is like crazy fast, okay? And that means they are the fastest healing cells in the body if they have everything they need. So this paper, uh, I want to touch on, and we'll have the link to this in the uh, you know description below. And basically, uh, what they did here was they had 222 COVID patients. Half of them get glutamine, half of them don't get glutamine. And they're going to compare the inflammatory markers in these patients over time and how they change. And they also looked at appetite. And and uh, oxidative stress. Now they gave 10 milligrams of glutamine three times a day. You need 30 grams a day. And that's kind of like the technical way they do it. I prefer 15 grams twice a day. Now that's a tablespoon of powdered glutamine twice a day. People are just much more successful. On a three time a day regimen, you may be pretty good for a couple days. You start missing it, you know, <laughs> rather soon. So most people can handle the tablespoon twice a day for the most part, and that'll still give you the 30. It's still very, very effective. Uh, we had, that was the dose we used uh, in the early days of HIV where we had this very same problem. Now let's look at the inflammatory markers. So this is the treatment group. Uh, I can tell you between the control group and the treatment group, they were the same. They looked at age and gender and all these different markers and here so before glutamine after glutamine and 
what all this tells us is the blood pressures are about the same, heart rate's about the same. There's no real change otherwise physiologically when they give them the glutamine. But what they look down here is, so this is tumor necrosis factor. It's a, a, a inflammatory, pro-inflammatory cytokine. You can see it's elevated at this point and it drops significantly, okay? Any number, 0 0.05 or less is significant. It means it's not by chance. So you get this marker drops. Here's a common one you'll have in your lab profiles. Uh, uh, highly sensitive CRP. These people are at 19, which is pretty high. They drop to 12, okay? This is, MDA is a marker of oxidative stress uh, in the mitochondria. So when it's high, that's not a good thing. You can see that's coming down with the glutamine. This is total antioxidant capacity, again. So glutamine helps repair the gut, so you don't have leakage, and then the inflammation drops. And then glutamine also bolsters your antioxidant capacity, and you can see that right here. And then interleukin-1-beta, that's another uh, pro-inflammatory marker, you know, in the, in the category of TNF, and you can see that drops. And this happened in five days, okay? This glutamine rocks. You'll you have this dramatic healing. People will report if they're also having loose or frequent stools associated with this that that'll clear up within a few days, within a week. Uh, people will actually lose muscle because the immune system in its starved state, needing more glutamine, will devour muscle. And people say just a couple days in the glutamine, they feel stronger. Their muscles just feel better. All right, and then with this reduction in inflammation, if you're having brain fog and some other kind of symptoms, and you would do this typically, I would recommend doing this uh, with something to deal with the SIBO, like rifaximin. But even without, you can get a strong response here. Um, uh, a lot of these other systemic symptoms these patients have get uh, improved, and most adults. I mean, it's like a week or two, and they'll say, I feel totally different so fast. Now, you don't need to do this very long, okay? Once you get the inflammation down, okay, because that's why you have a glutamine deficiency. Once the inflammation comes down and the gut heals up, you're able to make enough glutamine internally. You don't need this stuff anymore. So take it at least a month if you're feeling better. I recommend three months because it can take about that long if you've burnt off muscle mass to just fully restore your muscle mass, okay? Because uh, that's part of the fatigue some people feel is they just don't have enough muscle anymore. So do it at least a month, and then you can stop. Best is three months. Put a tablespoon, uh, just a level tablespoon. I put mine in a little glass of orange juice psh, twice a day. No brainer. All right, that's all for today, everybody. Uh, Hope you find this useful. Go out there and get some glutamine if you've ever had COVID. Take care.